ready for some really cool passion, drive, ambition, and sexy action <laughs> and sexy words too, because Mars has gone into the sign of Gemini and he's going to be there for a long time until about April the 20th fifth or so. So what I want to talk about is how much juice he's going to supply there. And it could bring you some great developments in areas of your life where Gemini falls in one of your 12 signs, uh, houses of your chart. So if you don't know your natal chart in whole sign houses, go to astro.com or astroseek. They're both free software packages, but your date, time, and you have to have your time of birth and all the information in where you were born. And then Put, click whole sign houses and this trust me it's simple that way and you're going to find out where this gemini goodness sits now we're going to talk a little bit about the collective and what mars and gemini might offer us all but i also going to do as i always do all signs and i time stamp them as you know so you can look for the time stamp for your sign you'll be able to see down in the description box below a little bit about that and just jump there as well but it's good to listen to the overview probably first um also i'm trying to be very mars i I've got my orange top i've got mars behind me i've got you can't see them but i got my red earrings i'm trying to play with mars i normally have purple hair was pulled back because purple isn't matching the rest of the outfit. But I want to say, you know, it is energy is fire. Mars is red. It is hot. It is spicy. It is peppery. And it adds that kind of vibe to whatever Mars touches in your chart, wherever he travels, whatever he comes into contact with as he goes through uh, the natal chart and maybe uh, interacts with some of your planets. So that's where it gets really fun to have a reading with an astrologer. And I'm going to do some kind of fun little uh, Mars report. Uh, reading and the description box should have it below which is just going to be me riffing for 15 minutes about mars's six weeks transit in your chart and it's i'm only going to do a few of them because i like i think they're fun so probably I'll, I'll have room for like 20 of those and i'm going to price them really really well um if you want uh, personalized attention on what it's like to have mars ri riffing through gemini for the next six weeks <laughs> check it out below also please like and subscribe and comment i read all my comments i heart them if i love what you said um I'm trying to grow the channel so please, please help me out thanks all right let's get going on mars so you know one of the things about mars when he's in gemini is he's under the lordship of mercury mercury owns gemini that's his land his real estate and therefore mars is a tenant or he's a journeyer through the acreage of the real estate that belongs to Mercury. So we can always look at what Mercury is up to in the sky at the time of this every two year events, like every two years, every two years this happens, right? Um, it's a little bit different this year. Mars is stronger than he usually is. Why do I say that? I've been saying this for a while. Like Mars kind of buffed up in uh, the last six months of 2020. Mars spent six months in his home sign of Aries and he really got strong. Well, think about uh, Mars doing P90F workouts and drinking smooth, uh, hot, you know, whatever, super hot powered smoothies and having a personal trainer. So there's a quality of Mars that we haven't seen since 1988, 89. He's like more fortified than he normally is. So I, I look at this Mars transit as a little bit different than usual. I look at it as a little like he's stronger than he normally is, but still he's got a bow to Lord Gemini, I mean, to Lord Mercury who owns Gemini. So Mercury is sitting up in Aquarius during the first half of this month and i'm not going to go through every little transit of the whole month because i will cover those in individual videos but for a while um it's an interesting development because that means that gemini is in a trine relationship i'm sorry mercury is in a trine relationship a harmonious flowing opportunistic good uh blessings and luck and opportunity energy trying to the nature of jupiter flowing Okay, flowing energy moving from Mercury and the sign of Aquarius to his home real estate in Gemini. And anyone who's in Gemini traveling through there gets to benefit from this flowing energy coming from Mercury. <laughs> now, Mercury is conjunct Jupiter, yay, on March the 4th. And that conjunction, March 4th, 5th, is still in play. Means Mercury is not only giving flowing energy to his home sign, but he's also activating a huge amount of uh, Jupiterian uh, inflationary goodness so big big things can happen in this first week of march now in the news cycle i have something today that just sounds so much like the inflation of something jupiter making it bigger blowing it up mercury news and the symbol that mars represents warrior hero fighter hunter there was a story today that was really sad in wisconsin they had a hunting season open for the gray wolf um, the trump administration took the gray wolf off the endangered species list in 2020 
and they give like 80, 80 kills to the Native American people and they give 113 kills to everybody else. The Native American tribes don't even touch it because they think the, the wolf is sacred. Like, hello, of course, it's a freaking big dog. We don't go around killing our dogs. And, you know, the sport hunting, it's not even for food. And so what happened was um, there was an overkill. It was like 200 and something wolves were killed. I mean, it went way over the 113 and they had to have a rule 24 hours to shut it down. And by the time they did, it was too late. And it was a travesty because it was the breeding season for the female wolves in February. And it's not normally when a hunt is. So they're probably pregnant she wolves that were killed and you get the picture, right? So anyway, that new story broke on the day of this recording, I believe, March the 3rd. <sighs> yeah, so there's Mars, the hunter. Uh, being blown up with some new story and you know Mars and Gemini the Gemini story is interesting Gemini is about uh, communication um, ideas um, you know sometimes marketing and merchandising and selling can be Gem Gemini oriented but you know there's a story about Gemini that's deeper than just you know all oh, these sort of fickle the fickle nature of the Gemini people that get so memed all the time I'm going to tell you a little about the Gemini story to understand what Mars is doing there. Okay, so give me a sec. I need some water. Ah, never start a recording without your water. Hang on. Water. <laughs> Plus, this thing is driving me crazy. This is like one of those tops I never wear. And I don't know why it's in my closet. And I just thought I used it as a costume, but it keeps falling down off my shoulder. And you know what I mean. So, uh, Gemini. The story of the Gemini twins is Castor and Pollux from Greek mythology. They're also known as the two peacocks and I think the two goats or something in other traditions around a uh, prehistoric world or whatever society. And um, the idea is that these immortal twins, right, one was immortal and one was mortal. One could die, one couldn't, and they're both sons of Zeus. And basically, um, and the, the, the provenance of the birth, which is who's a real mother, is up to the various myths. But the, the deeper point is, is that one twin was injured, one, the, the guy who kept care of the horses, the mortal twin, and he, um, his brother, because they really loved each other. <clears throat> so Castor was the mortal twin and Pollux was the immortal twin. Pollux was uh, given a choice to go into the, um, the divine world of Mount Olympus and live as an Olympian God because he was immortal or to share half of his divinity with his brother. And so his brother and him would spend a day in Hades in the underworld and a day in Mount Olympus and a day in Hades and a day in Mount Olympus back and forth to, to honor the fact that now they were both kind of half mortal and half immortal. And there's a story of brotherly love and sacrifice that's involved in the Gemini archetype that people don't really talk about. And, you know, it, there's a two energy involved, right? And I think it's our lesser angels and our our demons, you know what I mean? It's like our good, you know, the demons and lesser angels inside of ourselves and the good side of ourselves. And, you know, there's something about, or it could be the, the divine self and the, 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 the mucky muck of our mortal self. Anyway, there's just something about that wolf story that really struck me to the core today as being the side of the story that is our mucky, ucky mortal self. But it was a trine, a trine from Jupiter to Mars during the time this broke, which tells me that, yes, there was an excess of wolves killed. Jupiter can do that but perhaps also something good will come from this new legislation, new awareness that the wolves still are not out of the endangered peril. Um, not really, really, not really. They were near extinct in the 1950s and then they were put on an endangered species list sometime probably in the 70s and they bounced back, but still, the dogs. Anyway, I just digress. <laughs> back to the story. So Mars going through Gemini, it depends on where it falls in your chart, where it's going to play out, which we'll get to in the all signs. But a few thoughts that I have in general without going through every transit, which is like not what I really want to do today. I want to say that it feels to me that when Mars is in Gemini being trined by Jupiter, trined in a whole sign by Saturn, and for the first couple of weeks trined by Mercury, that the theme getting off to the races and a good start here has something to do with positive developments involving things to do with Mars when he's in a sign that belongs to Mercury. So for example, the Mars rover is on Mars right now. Mars rover is Mars. It's a, it's a moving vehicle. Mars is race cars, planes, trains, and automobiles. And it's on Mars. <laughs> and Gemini. Gemini is about communications. It's about news. It's about messages. It's a very busy, busy energy. It's a cadent house, you know? Um, it's where we get the mailman coming, you know? So what great news is going to come up for us, especially in the first two weeks of the month that could possibly pertain to some news about this thing up here, you know, this Martian story. I'm kind of excited. I kind of have a good feeling about that. 
Hmm. I'm trying to remember when Mars actually gets out of there and goes into the next sign over out of Gemini and into uh, the neighboring sign of Cancer. I don't remember. I don't want to pull the charts up, but let me ponder that for 30 seconds without belaboring the time here. Okay, so it is on the 16th, and I meant to say that Mercury is moving into, um, not, it's, he's not in Gemini, he's moving from Aquarius to Pisces, and then it's going to be more gritty, he'll be squaring Mars, okay, for the second half of the month, the Ides of March, which I think is the 15th of March. Now, the other thing is, uh, <laughs> I'm going to try myself nuts with this toga thing, the other thing is, is that um, the energy of the, the, the whole, you know, and it is the 23rd that Mars officially leaves um, the sign of Gemini. The whole energy of it to me is also not just about what's going on in planet Mars behind us. It has to do with themes of warriors, soldiers, um, re rebellion, even like, you know, uh, militia. It has to do, Mars has to do with um, athletes. So these things could be very prominent in the new cycle. Gemini me, me, having a natural alliance with Mercury, the messenger, or the, the, guy, the purveyor of news and stuff like that. So we could find prominent athletes, prominent um, soldier stories coming up for our digestion over the next couple of weeks, for sure. But they should be good stories, more heroic and good than anything else, you know, because there is a trine from Jupiter. So I'm looking for the bright side of those, those transits. Now, the other last thing I want to say, there's a really sweet and juicy transit coming up. And I might address it a bit in the all signs because I, I, I kind of think it can be quite, quite magical. That's one of my favorite words that everyone knows. I, I love the idea of things that are infused with the non-ordinary and have a, a flavor of magic to them. And you don't usually think of Mars and magic. They, the two of them are not like, oh yeah, Mars and magic, those two go together. They really don't um, typically in anyone's mind go together. But in my, this case, I think there's an exception to that. And I wanna talk about how I see the magic of Mars and I'll talk about that in the all signs too for you. So, so it is this little triangle that's formed in the sky around April 16th or the 17th, you know, both of those days. And um, it really is kind of magical and it involves a trine, a perfect trine between Mars and Jupiter. And it also involves Mercury and the sun. And so we're going to talk about that in the all signs, but it's kind of a go-getter success, ambition drive, payoff, um, lucky breaks, um, being magnetic and charismatic and almost like having like a, I don't know, Tom Jones and Elvis Presley magnetism, you know, almost like sexual charisma that you can use or just comes off of your storyline at that time. And, you know, it, it's just a very happy trine. It was, was a happy trine between Mars and Jupiter, okay, for sure, Mars and Gemini, Jupiter and Aquarius, but it's also they together are also in a sextile relationship to the sun and Mercury. So I'll show that with, to you guys in the all signs portion very shortly. We're just about there. Okay, so before we go to all signs, remember, this is about your sun, your uh, the rising sign first. Go to astro.com, find out your rising sign, and then look at your sun or moon sign. If you're born at night when the sun is below the horizon, look at the moon first and then the sun and vice versa. If you're born uh, in the day when the sun is above, above the horizon of the ascendant descendant line, that's why you should go cast your chart for you babies born at dawn or in the evening when you're not sure um, which you are, then it's good to look at the sun. Okay, that's your sect light. So I'm gonna show you the screen, enough of me in my costume that's driving me crazy. <laughs> and we're gonna go to the software together. So here we are. Um, Sometimes I might look away from you guys because I'm looking at my big screen, right? So just pay attention to whatever, you know, the picture on the screen, but not my profile. So here we have a picture of what it looks like, this little triangle that's coming up on April the 15th. I'm going to talk about each sign. I'm going to talk about the general idea of the Gemini uh, transit of Mars over the next six weeks, but I'm also going to talk about this little gift from the gods um, that happens, you know, it's not just one day. It's like April 15th, 16th, 17th, where this uh, Jupiter Mars will be in uh, a trine relationship to each other. <clears throat> All right, let's start off as we usually do with Aries. And before Aries, I tell you what's up here. Uh, if you look in the description box below, you'll see I have a little bit of a, a sale. Uh, I think I'm going to do 20 sessions max of 15 minutes each, little mini readings for anybody who wants to know about the six week transit in their chart of Mars, I'm going to cram as much as I can into a 15 minute session. Um, I, and I think I'm going to price that probably at um, 35 or $40 <laughs> because I just decided to do that as I was making this video. Let me be, I'm going to pick four because four is the emperor and the emperor is a Mars card in the tarot. So for $40, 15 to 20 minute 
riff on what this might be like for you. It, that would include detailed transits uh, that Mars will make to your personal natal chart planets during the six weeks ahead. Okay, so let's get going. Here we have this you know, little triangle, guys, and this triangle is the lucky thing that I'm talking about, this mini grand trine or this little karmic gift triangle. And you can see that there's that trine between, so we're looking at the 15th, 16th, and 17th of April, and we have this trine between uh, Jupiter and Mars is forming the trine, he's moving faster, and he's moving into position to be in a trine relationship to Jupiter. Now, in general, a Jupiter trine Mars energy is about success, but it's not success because you win the lottery. It's success for your hard work. So looking for some area, your ambition, your drive, your directionality, your focus, your goals could bring that is what we're going to talk about. So first of all, what is it like, first of all, to have to be an Aries rising, sun or moon, and to have this energy of Mars for the six weeks ahead, which only does every two years, going through your natal third house? Well, first of all, it could be a local trip because the third house is local trips and travel. So you might get on an airplane or a train or an automobile and go somewhere. Uh, this definitely would be domestic. It wouldn't be overseas usually. It's also your siblings. You may uh, argue, talk, or connect, or communicate, Gemini, vigorously, Mars, a lot with one or more of your siblings during the next six weeks, or travel to see a sibling. I'm an Aries sun and moon. I'm going to be traveling to visit my sister in my hometown in April. So you can see how some of this plays out throughout March and April. If you're online and social media um, and you're, or you're marketing and selling or you're an independent entrepreneur type person, that's all very third house energy. And um, the Gemini energy there supports you to uh, make big, bold uh, action plan movements and uh, be very uh, strideful, striding forward with Martian and goals and ambition. You know, the, the, Mars is like the drive to do things. He, he makes the action happen, you know? action you know so action in that part of your life and part of your chart is really predominant during the next six weeks it's a great time to get a lot of stuff done that you want to get done in your marketing selling social media stuff or if you're an online teacher of any sort like i am then you might be teaching a course or or getting a course all organized and ready to go but likely teaching it during those six weeks which i probably will uh, teach my do what you love mentorship a uh, program again uh, sometime during this transit or I may wait till the end of it, but have get, get it all in order. Now, the other thing is, is that the third house is the house of divination oracles and stuff like that. It's the house of the goddess. It's where synchronicity is. It's where you might want to see a tarot card reader and stuff. So with Mars going through the chart there, there's a lot of energy around that kind of stuff. So certainly any kind of, you know, divinatory, tarot, psychic, maybe even astrological consult you want, this is definitely the time to do it. You know, you've got Mars saying, let's take action. Let's go for it. And uh, did I think it missed anything about the third house I wanna say? Well, if you're a writer, because this is a house of self-expression, quite often writing, it's a really good time to almost channel something, like just like, like ambitiously write, you know, be driven to write, you know, to, like you're on like your own, your, your own tough love, tough love writing coach. <laughs> so keep that in mind too. I have to write something. I have 10 chapters or something I have to write in the next six weeks. So I'm glad as an Aries sun and moon that this is happening, this Martian ambition is happening in my third house. Now uh, to talk about the April 15th, 16th and 17th um, trine. So mini trine. So I think this is gonna look for a lot of the Aries folk like opportunities and luck and expansion coming in social groups and through friends as allies and benefactors. It could be also some um, great lucky money bounty from the work you're doing, being able to apply that bounty towards things that you're working on in the third house. Like, oh my God, I just sold out on my course and I've got all this extra money. I'm going to upgrade my social media platforms or I'm going to you know, reach out to uh, new, new people with an advertising strategy or something like that. Um, Jupiter in the 11th though is definitely about the people that you belong to by affiliation of choice. Your shared ideals, your shared, shared dreams and stuff like that, your shared um, beliefs. Um, you can also look at it as a, a house in which your hopes, dreams, and wishes are. Jupiter's there, like literally, um, you know, saying, let's expand, let's make them bigger, let's, you know, grow them some really good feet. He has to listen to Saturn. I didn't put Saturn in here, but Saturn's just behind him. So he has to listen to Saturn. And Saturn says, but make those dreams real. You know, make sure that you can ground them in the real world, make sure they're practical, make sure you have the determination to pull it off. But for a lot of Aries, this is a transit, you know, here on April 15th, 16th and 17th, where you could pull something off. 
you can pull it off. You can get the thing done that you think you want to do that could be a big dream or goal. Alrighty. So good luck with that. And then of course, there's this sextile combination to the sun and Mercury. Uh, Mercury, I like Mercury just as a straight up messenger, but he's hidden under the beams of the sun. So I doubt you're going to get overt messages from your first house, which is yourself. <laughs> but it, but that almost uh, that combust Mercury is leaning into the sun and he's kind of a bit of a magician when he gets that close to the sun. So maybe some interesting developments about your 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 own um, things you're doing in your own world for yourself, um, your own body, your own mind, your own temperament. Um, this is this can be very sattvic, you know, very even keel, very equanimous when Mercury. So the thinking mind, the busy mind, the monkey mind is this close to the sun. And, you know, as he gets closer and closer and then goes Kazemi in a few days after this, there's a real strong slowing the mind down. And as that mind is slowing down, what magical Eureka's, ahas and ideas can come to you. All righty, and especially from the first house, these would be ideas that fortify your identity and your image and your sense of self. And of course, Mercury is operating to bring this, you know, April 15th goodness to the story from Mars's sign. So the magic is that there is a gorgeous reception between the two planets and so Mercury must abide by the rules of Mars's house and Mars must abide by the rules of Mercury's house. So they're working in extremely good harmony together at this juncture of the sky. Okay, and in modern astrology, this is Mercury's exaltation sign of Aquarius. And again, that's also a kind of a reception where Jupiter is um, in the sign where Mercury can be exalted. So you see there's a lot of sweetness in this goodness for getting something big off the ground. Technically, Mars is leading the story for a third house thing. Big project, big development, your social media, um, something really good coming from a trip, some auspicious developments there as well. Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is happening in this triangle. First of all, let's talk about the general gist, sorry of what it's like to have this Gemini um, Mars transit in your money house. Well, it's money, right? Your drive and your ambition to be really focused on creating income all through March and into you know April 24th is huge. Mars will be in here for the entire time. So you're gonna be focused, driven, ambitious, uh, energized around creating more resourcefulness in your life, increasing your, your possessions, your self-worth, your self-esteem, your self possession and also with that your money now it's the house of voice as in vocation and voice some of you um, Taurus sun moon and ascendant people might be focused on refining your your voice I mean what do you really want to do what's the call of this lifetime you know vocation comes from the same root word as to uh, vocari which is in latin call so that's why I think it's also a, a revenue resource house because we, we drive our revenue and our resources through our, our vocation our voice our calling some of you guys are really Mars will cut away, snip, snip, snip the dead wood, like a hard garden prune, you know, of the rose bush that's overgrown to make it more beautiful. And so I'm thinking you're going to end up uh, redirecting yourself a bit here and finding some what I'm going to get rid of and what I'm going to keep in terms of true, true voice, true vocation, so I can increase my money in this six week time frame. You can see there's a lot of goodness going on here. Oh, and by the way, things you put in your mouth, food, food styles are very much um, second house. What you say, and what you come, what goes in and out of the mouth, throat. So yeah, you might change your food style. Mars would say, cut out the gluten, you know, cut out this, cut out that, snip away that. <laughs> you might be very ambitious in doing that with Mars there as well. So also for you, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Senate, look at this beautiful uh, activity of success. Jupiter says to Mars in April 15th, 16th, and 17th, big success is possible in your money story, deriving from big, bold, happy Neptune up there, Jupiter up there in your house of career. If you're a student, your, your, your career is being a student. It's also your reputation and your action in the world is seen by others. So all of a sudden, this is really, really getting um, 
a kind of a boost from the Mars in the second house and Jupiter is happy to receive that energy of action and drive and, uh, and momentum in uh, career and money stories. And this uh, lovely triangle with this mutual reception here between Mars and um, Mercury is happening in your 12th house of your dreams at night and your meditations and your reveries and your ideas and all of that good stuff that can come when you're just, you know, uh, blow drying your hair, driving your car, you know, when your mind is kind of calm and Mercury's calming down, he's going into this part of the sun, he's getting mindful, he's getting quieter, your mind is more still. But please pay attention to your dreams at night and that 12th house activation absolutely could really trigger uh, some great insights or if you meditate or do yoga or any um practice where you still the mind anyway this is from that stillness could come a drop of incredible inspiration that fortifies this earnings and self-possession and self-worth and fortifies this jupiter um you know, wants to expand your sense of who you are in the world and how you can achieve success and what you want to express as your action and you know, practice in this world, your career in essence. Hmm. Anything else I want to say? Yes. Check the description box below for $40. I'm going to rip on your Mars transit for the next six weeks. It will be a 15 to 20 minute video, uh, video like a, a Zoom call like this, where I'd look at your chart with you and I'll go through all of the major turning points in the six weeks um, in a nutshell to tell you what to expect during this uh, once every two year transit. So check that out below. I'm only going to do a limited number of these fun short readings, which I love to do sometimes because it's like I don't have to sit for an hour and a half with a client. I can just pull something out of a hat and it's kind of fun for me. Uh, next. All right. Uh, Gemini, sun, moon, and ascendant. Well, wow, look at that. Mars is really going to town in your first house all through March and into the 23rd or so of April. What does that mean? It means that you are physically getting fit, probably. You're thinking about your body. You're taking action to vitalize yourself, to, magnet, to make yourself more magnetic and fierce and warrior-like, and to take into account the body needs to move. <laughs> Mars is about motion. So locomotion... So are you thinking about exercise lately? Have you signed up for a yoga teacher training program like I did, even though I'm not a Gemini rising sun or moon? Are you somebody who is literally looking for ways to be more physically fit right now? And also feeling more um, fiery and more mm, sexual in your body. Mars' sexual energy is probably important for some of you Gemini, sun, moon, and ascendant people. I love that Jupiter is giving a lot of love from the ninth house and pulling, uh, the, they're pulling energies back and forth. Mars is saying to Jupiter, I'll give you the drive and ambition to achieve something in your ninth house of foreign lands and travel, higher education, soul, God, truth, and wisdom, um, book publishing, Dharma, spiritual teachers. Um, Jupiter transiting in 2020. One, through some of your Gemini's ninth houses, will bring you back to school to learn something, especially higher ed wise, but it can also bring a spiritual teacher, guide or mentor or really good psychologist or coach to your story in this year ahead. Well, you get guided by somebody of Jupiterian wisdom. So right now though, in this April 15th, 16th and 17th, this looks like sweet, sweet, sweet energy to your ninth house. You know, certainly um, your Physical well-being is connected to that ninth house in a good way during those three days. And so, you know, if you have a chance to study something or learn something, especially about physical fitness in the middle of April, I'd say go for it. And then this Mercury get coming close to the sun, the monkey mind, the ideas, but they're slowing down, they're invisible, won't really be visible uh, in the sky until Mercury gets out of the beams of the sun, let's say, a week and a half or so later, but you get this idea that Mercury is going into the sun for a conversation, slowing down in the house of your groups of, of belonging, uh, your uh, tribes, uh, friends who are allies and benefactors to you. Um, this can look like your social media communities as well that you belong to. So what in what way is Mercury going to sort of deliver news from that part of the story, but maybe not immediately? Maybe there's something just stating here that's really going to jump out a couple within a couple of weeks after this mid-April event. Um, but I do want to say that with Mercury involved here in mutual reception, like living in the sign that belongs to Mars and Mars is having a, 
a, a vacation in Mercury sign, there's a sort of a sweet, easy flow here between 11th house things in your life and first house identity and belonging and who, I mean, identity, who am, who am I? What is my body? <laughs> Jupiter, I mean, sorry, Jupiter sextiling this, a house of great gains. You could have some financial bonus coming, boom, from something you're doing in the world and you know promotion a windfall as well but it would be like usually coming from the career direction so unexpected bonus points money points could come to you from career stuff as well all right moving on cancer sun moon and ascendant you're going to be receiving this um goodness of and interesting qualities of mars and gemini in a very subtle place in your chart it is your 12th house where things are quite hidden from your own personal view. So you can't see them that well yourself. Um, you could say that this is, you know, dreams, subtle intuitions, something, ideas that come in a meditation, but Mars is really active here. Certainly sometimes uh, this can be a foreign lands house and some of you could end up traveling uh, to a foreign land during the March and April, all of March to April 23rd. On the other hand, this could also be about um, people who, this is a house of hidden enemies, people who don't really have your back, you know, but you would definitely with Jupiter there, expose them. Anyone who was gossiping or didn't have your back in some way, you know, talking behind your back, okay. Jupiter in the house of secrets will out them. <laughs> or someone who does a male in particular who doesn't really have your back might be revealed as such and you will be well, well off for knowing that. Jupiter is all about goodness and he's in the house of not just finances, but secrets. Now, Jupiter is in the house of your money in 2021, improving your savings, your 401k, your, your banks, your loans, your debts, your taxes. Yay. He's bringing you luck there, but he could also bring you a bit of a financial luck bonus point here because of that sextile to Mercury and the sun in the 10th house. If some good news comes to you, it could be coming through a father, father figure, 10th house figures, or it could be coming through the idea of um, some action you want to take in the world to do with your career. And Jupiter gives you good blessings from the eighth. Could give you enough money to do something. Um, mm -hmm. In the ancient Hellenistic tradition, the only planet that's happy in the eighth house is Jupiter. <laughs> It bestows good blessings there. I can't remember what Firmic, Firmicus Maternus says, but I can't, but there is goodness with Jupiter in the eighth house. So the idea here is that you have something good coming to you. Um, Jupiter in the eighth, when someone is born, it stands to inherit. So it's like there's an, inherit, an inheritance of goodness coming into your chart. I'm eating chocolate, guys. I'm sugar lowing. So what else? I don't know. Feels like a breakthrough in your money, a breakthrough in your career, and a breakthrough in things that were hidden from view that you now see more clearly through meditation, reverie, or disclosure. All right, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. So a lot of that energy in mid-April is fortifying your career, Sun in the 10th house. Mm -hmm. And mutual reception to Mars in the 12th. Um, the 12th house is money from foreign lands, like when we're doing business from foreign lands. And so PayPal and Stripe accounts, hello. So we see ka-ching, ka-ching in career, career. Mercury, a sun, what kind of authoritative messenger are you? What sort of um, solar message do you want to deliver to the world? Or does your career involve at that point? Finally, good news from a boss. Good news from an authority figure and work coming to you. Delayed though, delayed. Almost like the rumblings of something's developing and maybe a couple of weeks later, it all falls into place. Leo, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is going to be an experience of uh, Mars for six weeks, all through March into April 23rd, moving through your 11th house of good spirit. These are your friends and allies. These are your social groups you belong to by choice. This is where your alliances are coming through your own desires because you have mutual interests with people. People wanna help you in this house. They wanna be your ally. Um, male allies could be coming to you through the next six weeks and 
Mars wants you to take a lot of action up there, but people forget that Mars cuts away and severs things as well. You may cut away from some social groups or online groups or communities that don't fit you anymore and that would, and friendships that no longer work. That would be normal. That would be okay, Leo, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant to cut away there as well. You could also find that you are um, opening up with ambition uh, to some kind of um, 11th house activities like a social media platform that you really get involved in and you're, you're just driving away at it and having fun and getting going and feeling ambitious and excited about it. That's Mars in the 11th. And then Mars is getting that lovely trine from Jupiter in your house of marriage, business partnerships, significant others, clients and audience. So, hmm, <laughs> I never eat while I do these readings guys, but I'm having a voraciously hungry day. So I say for you guys, you know, Leo, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant, something good is percolating in the partnership part of the chart, whether it's your business or husband or wife, this Jupiter is really positive. Jupiter going through your seventh house anyway, Leo, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant, especially Ascendant, means good news for your, your main partner, business or love. During 2021, they get that Jupiter blessing like collaterally from you. Um, so it could be your partner has some really good news in the six weeks ahead. And now if you look specifically at the trine, because Mars isn't here trining, it's April 15th, 16th, and 17th, this good news can pop for or about your spouse or par business partner. And the energy of these two sextiles with Mercury in reception, sitting in the house of Mars and Mars in his house, like really beautifully aligned and the sun involved as well. What a sweet, perfect little triangle. Mercury is saying, um, I've got some news. I'm going to deliver from the ninth house. Information about education, foreign lands, foreign travel, information about books, book publishing, knowledge and wisdom, mentorship, guidance, um, education, like higher education. I, mean, I didn't say that. So I, you could be getting wind in the April of something you really want to study and you're getting a, a sense of destiny and excitement about it. And because there's some good luck coming from Mars in the 11th house, you might get a grant or a scholarship or a friend might loan you some money to take it. I mean, there's so many good ways that could play out. Um, your husband should be supportive or your wife because <laughs> everything's in a happy, happy triangle, trying sextile thingy. All right. So, yay. Don't forget. I forgot to say that for the last sign, but uh, Leo's I'm having a little fun. Um, $40 for like, you know, you know, 20 minutes. Uh, report just for you looking at your chart and how this Mars transit will affect you specifically based on your natal chart over the next six weeks, digging into a lot of the other transits that are going to happen in the sky, but also how they hit you in your chart uh, over the course of this time, six weeks ahead. So Virgo, sun, moon, and ascendant, especially ascendant. This is a um, energetic um, boost of Mars's ambition in your career house. Oh my God. Like, are you guys on fire, magnetic, action-taking uh, energy in the house of career and cutting away the dead wood? What don't you need? What don't you want? What is superfluous in your career path, in your work path, in your action path? What is it you don't want? What do you do want? What are you, where are you going? Mars is really giving you a boost here. And you know, for six weeks, goodness gracious, all of March into April 23rd, you're really succeeding. If you're a student, for instance, and you're listening to this, I could say you're, the job you have is to be a student. So you're, you're killing it. You're very successful in your student job. But if you're not a student per se, and even if you are, this could also be opportunities for career advancement or work. And, and Jupiter from the house of work and work routines is, is so supportive, especially on the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Now, I like to look very literally like a colleague at work gives you some good news that boosts you in your career. This is your colleagues at work, uh, co-workers, co you know, for those who are employed. Um, these are, you know, co-people in your workspace. This is also ways you do the work. And so maybe you'll have a boost of like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't know about this app. It's totally streamlined my whole work. <laughs> or I didn't know about this technology that I could have been using all along. So Jupiter in the house of work, Mars in the house of career could really streamline good luck directions, April 15th, 16th, and 17th. And then there's this eighth house money stuff happening here or secrets revealed. 
uh, you know, Mercury likes to whisper secrets, sweet nothings and all of that. And he's in the heart of the sun. So he's not doing a lot until he gets out. So let's say two weeks from this, this uh, April 15th, you might have some reveals of some information you didn't know and it's told to you or you hear of it. It's significant. It means something about your money or um, with so many meanings to the eighth house, um, the sun in the eighth house with Mercury at this time, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Um, if you have any penchant for occult knowledge, mystery stuff, you know, tarot cards um, sh or shamanism or even a, a astrological magic or just plain old magic, you may want to Mercury learn something from an authority sun, but you won't probably learn it right away in April 13, 14, and 15, but you might be getting their ducks in a row and you might be thinking about something like that and it may percolate out in the two weeks that follow. So this is an inheritance house as well as a money house. So um, you could like have news of some money that you is, is owed to you or tax rebate money that's owed to you. So some kind of money coming to you that you didn't expect because Jupiter's sextiling, right? So Jupiter says bounty, bonus points. <laughs> Ping, bang, bing, <laughs> as Donald Trump would say. All right, so it feels really sweet for your money, for your career and for your work. Libra, sun, moon, and ascendant. This is an energetic that you're experiencing with Mars traveling for six weeks in um, Gemini through your ninth house of God, truth, soul, wisdom, foreign lands, higher education, Dharma. Sometimes spiritual teachers are up there. And it's, you know, Dharma is your life purpose. So Mars has really uh, been really trying to assist you and will be for six weeks, you know, to really refine life purpose. You want to know a bit more about how it might be hitting you in your chart then take a look at the little special below where I'm going to do a $40 reading, uh, about 20 minutes probably, where I go look at everybody's chart. I always go longer than I say, but you get the idea. I'll be looking at your chart, your specific chart, to tell you how these are playing out in your life over the six weeks, the multiple transits and the way Mars will hit other planets as well as eclipse points, etc. Okay, so you could be also with Mars there really uh, killing it as a teacher. If you're an instructor or a guide or a mentor or a teacher in any way, uh, and especially if it's more than just like a weekend workshop, then you are like driving, you are like on fire, you are Martian, you are going for it. There's a lot of words there, Mars and Mars and Gemini, but you're really, really masterfully pushing that energy through. And if you want to learn something and you think you're going to take a course or study something, then in April 13th, 14th and 15th is golden, golden time for you, Libra, Sun, Moon and Ascendance for it to flow really well. Certainly learning at all is good for you during the next six weeks, um, you know, all through March into April 23rd. Or our trips to foreign lands. Mars loves to travel. This is the house of foreign lands. Good luck in COVID getting it off to a foreign land. <laughs> but if it opportunity knocks, you might take it. Also, Libra, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. Look at this Jupiter sweet spot in your fifth house of romance. Joy, play, fun, pleasure. Then the Jupiter is there for all of 21. Mostly, you know, he leaves for three months, May, June, July, but then comes back. You're kind of looking at this could be a very romantic, uh, sparky time for you. Um, you could also have more fun than you normally do and enjoy life a lot more. You could also find um, a spouse, especially a man if you're a heterosexual woman that you're in love with, like a, a dating that looks marriageable. Um, and also Jupiter is kind of like... A, the spark of life is here, your joy spark, and Jupiter expands what it touches. And if you've lost touch with the spark of life and the joy of life and the inspiration of life and the muses here as well, and you've got lost your artistic creative inspiration, Jupiter will, is definitely firing it up big time in 2020. One, and if you want children as well. But all of that aside, it could get you pregnant here. Jupiter, the fertility god, can get some of you Libra, Sun, Moon, and Ascendants knocked up. Be careful. But the idea is April 13th, 14th, and 15th. Jupiter sends beautiful support to Mars and Mars is, comes back and fortifies Jupiter and the two of them are in a love fest with each other. So creative expression, children, love, harmony, travel trips out of the, out of the country, or higher education and learning. And then over here, boom, uh, the seventh house of committed partnership. So a lot of you Libra, Sun, Moon, and Sun are definitely dealing with relationship issues during this April 13th, 14th, and 15th. Um, 
Mercury near the heart of the sun getting closer, combust actually is actually, you know, going to get reborn again. So it's getting ready for a rebirth. So what part of your marriage life or business partnerships life, life is getting ready for a rebirth. Now every rebirth has a death. So you may be dealing with some endings here, but there's beginnings afterward for sure when Mercury comes out the other end and any, anything that ends a primary love relationship or a business partnership, trust it right now because some of you Libra, Sun, Moon, and Sun, it's need this ending to happen. Mercury will come out the other end and under the energy of this sweet, sweet, sweet sextile from Jupiter, as he goes into the heart of the sun, he carries that sextile from the beneficent God, Jupiter. So good endings, blessed endings, leading to ideally new beginnings after. Scorpio, sun, moon, and ascendant, the energy of Mars is traveling through your eighth house for all of March into the third week of April. This is a money house. A lot of you Scorpio people are looking at money new, a new, oh, Mars will have you really cut back a lot of your expenditures if they're unnecessary and to do a lot of hard ass bookkeeping and rearranging of your money. But it's still a good energy because he's being fortified by a trine from Jupiter and, in, and a whole sign trine from Jupiter during the entire six weeks. Jupiter will bring uh, success when he trines um, Mars, as I said earlier in the intro. So money success is indicated here for the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Through your hard work, not through luck, but success nonetheless. Jupiter in the fourth house of home and real estate. Some of you Scorpios might sell a home, you might move, you might do something really good from your home, like teach from your home, expand your home. But things you do from your home in 2022 have Jupiter's blessings, whether they're moving, selling, buying, renting, all blessed during 21, where he sits here for most of the year, except May, June, and July. And it's just in April 15th, 16th, and 17th, there's a lot of good sweet spot stuff going on here. And you know, this mutual reception here where, you know, Mercury in your sixth house of work protocols and health protocols and the way you do the work you do and the people you work with is, uh, you know, really having a sweet conversation. He's in the heart of the sun with the near the heart of the sun, really sweet conversation with this Mars. And, you know, for me that you're going to have uh, some sort of really positive money development here. I really like this for you. Hang on, I'm gonna just check something for a sec. Oops, I just wanna check that I'm recording. <laughs> you guys, you know I do this every time I'm having a panic attack that I'm not recording. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm gonna stop the share and make sure I'm recording. That's like me, typical me. Uh, am I recording? What am I recording? I do this every time I am recording. <laughs> oh my God, guys, it's so bad, it's so bad. I always have a terrible feeling that maybe I am not recording. So back to the screen. Um, <laughs> welcome to my really weird world. I, I just wanna just jump off a bridge if I spent all this time not having the record button on <laughs> oh my gosh so i love that you guys are having this energy in the money house and for a lot of you scorpio sun moon and ascendant whether it's buying or selling a home or moving or doing something really productive and exciting from your home especially work from home major good breakthroughs during that april time success ahoy Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to move to the next sign, but I'm moving by days, okay? I meant to move by hours, I apologize. All right, chocolate is not the best food substance when you're trying to think on a show here. Don't forget to check out my special below. <laughs> Sagittarius, sun, moon, and ascendant, especially ascendant. Please take a look at this. Mars goes through your marriage house and your business partnership and sometimes clients and audience. And how long? Yeah, all of March to the third week of April, April 23rd. Look at this, Mars, Mars, Mars. This is definitely a time that could be, first of all, you could have more conflicts and arguments with your marriage partner, but also if you're single and 
you're wanting a partner. Mars can be about sexuality and it could bring in a really hot new relationship. Um, also for some of you Sagittarius, Sun, Moon and Ascendants, if you need to negotiate legal affairs, contracts and negotiations like that are the seventh house and you may be dealing with those affairs, but Mars will support you to win, to be the champion of the legal fine print and the contracts and the negotiation. It's not the court case, it's the actual papers that you need to sign and things going well and the negotiations around paperwork. Now, as well, um, <clears throat> this seventh house is your audience. If you're a Sagittarian who's got a client, like your social media is micro celebrity or something, or any kind of audience, this is gonna be Mars really ramping up your success in that part of the chart. Now, you've got this Jupiter energy coming on the April 15th at two days from the third house of your trips and travel. And Jupiter will be in your third house for most of 21. So you'll do more trips and travel than you normally do. A lot of you back and forth, domestic for sure, not usually international. The house of siblings, Jupiter's trying to do something good with your siblings. If you have problems with your siblings, Jupiter's trying to lend a hand all through 2021. Jupiter will win the day, he really will. Saturn is his Lord right now, but he still will win the day in terms of the sibling story. So you'll have reconciliation or find harmony or things will work out with your siblings. Now, Jupiter also in the third house could propel you to learn. Jupiter rules learning. This is a house of learning, especially weekend workshops, seminars, a skills-based learning, how to crochet, how to fire a kiln, uh, how to drive a race car. <laughs> so you're gonna learn some things for sure during Jupiter's transit in 2000. 21 through this part of the chart. So, but Jupiter might say on April 13th, 15th, 16th, and 17th, let's learn something that can really help you with your relationships, business, and otherwise. And let's look at the romantic fifth house where you have this um, Mercury close to the sun. Um, I think Mercury is about three days out from being Kazemi or hitting the actual heart of the sun on the 15th. And there's a feeling here of like literally you coming into this sense of real in, in, intense energy in the love story. If there's, if you're a single Sagittarius, you could meet somebody who's the light of your life. You light up my life, you bring me hope. The sun is very well positioned in the fifth house natally. Now it's a transit through the fifth. It's joy, it's fun, it's play, it's pleasure. It's vitality with the sun there. It's a spark of life with a full on Inferno of the sun, the inferno of the sun there. Holy moly. <laughs> However, with you know Mercury going into the Kazemi position, and I, let me just check when that is. <laughs> I should have done that for everybody else, but now that I'm intrigued by you guys. Yeah, so Mercury's like really uh, digging in there. It looks like the Kazemi is coming through around the 17th, yeah, between the 17th and the 18th. And this uh, transit, is this, this is still active, see? 26, 26, woo! This could be like news or information about someone that you're gonna fall in love with or you are going or will be with, but it doesn't fully develop yet. Like it, it's not fully ready, it's being born here. Uh, it's like a conception in love, but it's also your own business. You could conceive your own business. You could birth your own business. You could birth your own um, anything here, honestly. Uh, project, business, book, creation, idea, real babies. So, so it's about relationship, maybe legal contracts, business partnerships, siblings, but also business ideas, um, muse, inspiration, and romance it could all be a part of April's you know, journey of this exciting time where, you know, 15th, 16th and 17th of April, magic is in the sky. I think I'll call this magic in the sky. Because, you know, Mercury is a magician. Don't forget to check out my reading below. I'm doing the days again, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> Don't forget to check out my reading below where for 20 minutes, I'll riff on this Mars story for you and your natal chart, about 20 minutes of deep dive info about how the six weeks transit will affect you, including uh, activations of the eclipse points in Gemini. All right, sorry, now I'm going back to the hours.
Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is happening for you guys with this transit of the Gemini Mars transit, bringing all that fire and movement and ambition and drive in the workhouse. So what is it you want to do in the work story? What is it you want to do to change your work? What are you paring away in your work? What are you cutting away? What are you releasing? What are you, if you're an employer, what employees are you letting go of? If you're employed, what ways are you streamlining and cutting away what you don't need in the workplace, okay? And work protocols, health protocols too. Mars is like, oh, we gotta get healthy. Let's take up Tai Chi or let's take up Kung Fu fighting or let's take up something that makes our body move to be healthy. Yoga will count, I guess, too. And so a lot of you Capricorns are looking at uh, momentum around health and a momentum around work. And that's all for March and into the third week of April. This little April 17th goodie, goodie bag of magic in the sky is going to offer, offer you some kind of um, mini blessing here. And it looks like it's about the work environment. It looks like it's about your money and your self-worth and your possessions and your voice and your vocation. Jupiter's fortifying, blowing up, expanding all of this for you all through 21. Great money year for you resourceful Capricorns. You're going to kill it financially. This is a year for you to really make a lot of money. Hmm. Now you add to that in this little window of luck, this magical luck thing happening here that, you know, you can succeed at something to do with money and work, money and livelihood, six and two. And then there's sextile energy and mutual reception at that between Mercury and um, Aries and Mars in Gemini, where the two of them are in co each other's house, co cooperating to keep each place tidy. I think this could be about some good news from the homestead where you are doing things in and from the home. Now, sun in the fourth house transit, a male authority figure in the base of the chart, could even be a father figure, could be very instrumental for you, um, coming into assistance or helping you in some way. And there may be news from a father figure or an ancestral figure in your chart. Could be an uncle, a great uncle, a grandfather, even, I just don't know. It's kind of the ancestral line as well. Um, but anyway, the whatever percolates here in this part of April, wait about maybe a week or so when Mercury's way more visible in the sky for you to see the fullness of this, of this offering. If any of you Capricorn Sun Moon descendants have real estate to sell, I'm you know, there's a little triangle pointing at this, which could bring you money and freedom or new, new directions and work. I'd say, you know, good time to sell some real estate. No doubt about it. Or to, to relocate. Mercury likes to move and news about a relocation, a new rental, a new property, a new home could be coming to you in the middle of April. classically the house of the mother the fourth house the system I use so also some interesting developments regarding your relationship with your mom but these are all very positive like mom says hey you want to move out let me pay for it <laughs> all right Aquarius sun moon and ascendant oh that's me I'm an Aquarius rising guys this is happening for you uh, this um, Martian transit of six weeks through all March into the middle of April, third week of April, in the house of romantic love, in the house of your children, and in the house of your inspiration and the muse and your independent business. Now I'm an independent businesswoman. Mars is going through the house of inspiration, but also independent business. I'll tell you, I, I anticipate working really effectively. A lot of um, drive and ambition and motivation will be available to me. But also I might be sparking a romantic love affair on Mars will sexuality. Um, if you're a female who's hetero, it can also be a, the lover or a male. So there's a sense of, you know, for some Aquarius, sun, moon, and ascendance of romantic love sparking up in the next six weeks from the date of this recording, which is March the 3rd. Also, there is um, Mars in the fifth house will streamline things, cut back what isn't needed. And if, and the children, if you have grown children, young children, doesn't matter, you Aquariuses will be more stern and disciplinarian and vocal about an authoritative in a Martian way, like a soldier commander of your children, but it's a good energy, really. I mean, you know, you're going to just be more assertive with your children and maybe put up harder boundaries and be more verbally clear about what you need and want and don't want from your children. And Jupiter in your first house is giving you like the year that you've been waiting for. Every 12 years, you get that transit. You might get a little plumper. I already put on like eight pounds <laughs> since this happens. It's December 20, 
since December the 17th, no, December the 19th, when Jupiter got into this part of the chart. Oh my God, guys, I'm on a pasta binge. I love pasta lately. So what, I was too skinny anyway. But so Jupiter transiting for Aquarius is this year in the first house, I mean, putting on a bit of weight. I mean, you feel confident, you feel good about yourself. You feel your whole being feels optimistic. You see the half full cup, you see the rainbows, the lollipops, you know, just feeling really good. Jupiter's really good there, Fe strong. If you're a teacher, which I am online, that makes your identity as a teacher even stronger. A good year for online guides, coaches, and teachers who are Aquarius rising. Now, this energy is on the you know 16th, 17th, and 18th or so, whatever, the middle of April there. Um, it's going to be offering, Jupiter's going to bring blessings from the first house of identity over to Mars in the fifth house of inspiration and creativity and money, money luck too. But yeah, Jupiter Mars is success through things that you do with your own effort really. So your own effort yields great financial rewards as well as all the inspiration and play and creativity that's possible here. And this reception between Mars and Mercury, ma, 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 you know, as Mercury's getting ready to go into the heart of the sun, Kazemi offers up some sort of sweetness here of the magical, synchronistic, and uh, even enchanting in the third house. The third house is a house of the goddess. It involves like scryers and tarot card readers and divination and synchronicity. It's also writing and it's also teaching online courses or social media platforms as well. And all of the busyness of the Cadent house, you know, getting things done, skills-based stuff. I think a lot of Aquarius Risings are gonna have uh, this would be a good launch energy. If any Aquarius rising is going to launch a course, it's not like, you know, two years long, you're going to teach something or take something. Either way, this is a very good time for that during this auspicious mini grand trine of goodness here. So I will probably launch something in that April time frame because it makes sense to me. And I've got things that I've been meaning to launch. So I might relaunch my do what you love with the magic you're born for, of course, at this juncture or something else. Aha, uh -huh. so we shall see. Oh, I'm going back, going back. Sorry, give me a minute guys. Aquarius rising, this is your siblings, okay? So aunts and uncles can, and cousins can be here too. So more connection with them, more communication with them. Something good is trying to happen with that crew of siblings and maybe aunts, uncles and cousins and local neighborhood friends and trips and travel. If you're traveling during April domestically, which I will be, this is a very auspicious triangle for those trips and travel. I'll be driving my car to my hometown and then I'll be driving there maybe to Ottawa area. So, you know, local domestic travel. Don't worry, I'm a bubble of one. <laughs> I'm going to visit my sister who's a bubble of one or two, that kind of thing. All right. Uh, don't forget Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. I have a little sale down below. Check it out. You'll kind of have fun with it. If you want to get a deep dive into your Mars transit, I'm going to do it in 20 minutes. I think I can do pithy $40 for 20 minutes where I'm going to go through all of the major turning points and what the big deal is of Mars having his journey through your fifth house during 2020. One. Oh, I almost did it, overdid it. Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. Mars is having a heyday in your fourth house of real estate all through March into the third week of April. It's a great time to renovate your house, get a carpenter and fix things up for sure. And, you know, you might just do it anyway, if I didn't tell you to, it's also momentum down there. You could list your house for sale. You could buy a new house. You could rent a house. You could move home. Mars going through the fourth house. A lot of people relocate. Um, you could also be feeling that your home can be a source of conflict with somebody who you live with. Uh, be careful for ver verbal aggression and conflict and feeling gritty and annoyed with somebody that you live with during 2021's transit here of Mars through your fourth house. And it doesn't happen often every two years. So be paying attention to that and be mindful of that. You could also dispossess yourself of things. Mars likes to cut, cut away the dead wood. So time to throw out the junk, clean the closet, empty the, empty the basement. It's a little bit like that Marie Kondo 
the art of magic of tidying up. You're gonna to go to try to find the joy spark here in your home and cut away all that doesn't really bring you goodness. So it could be a very house cleaning, spring cleaning vibe for you guys. Um, then all Jupiter is coming from your house with past lives and dreams at night and um, reverie and meditation and income from foreign lands too, by the way. Um, so like PayPal Stripe accounts if you're an online business woman or man. But um, Jupiter is bringing blessings from a very sweet but invisible place. So it's subtle. It's subtle realm help, big dreams, uh, guides and spirit guides or something like that, blessing the fourth house endeavors. And then... The Mercury Sun Kazemi and Mercury is mutual reception. Don't forget tomorrow. So they're really, really well corresponding. This is happening in your second house of money. And so you could have some great financial developments occurring. Again, are you going to sell a house? Mm. Are you going to buy a, a new house? It's really great. But it's like you it makes your finances better anyway. If it's more expensive or maybe it's less expensive and you pocket money from the sale of one house. Some of you Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Ascendants are having changes of home for sure though. But the money story is lovely. So maybe wait a week after this uh, mid-April, April, you know, 15th, 16th, 17th, 15th, 16th, 17th, wait a week um, after for Mercury to get out of the sun a little bit more because he's going into the heart of the sun in a couple of days after this. But it could be like, you know, a great financial opportunity coming to you for a job or some work that you didn't see or expect right away. I mean, news of good news for your money, but usually the second house is vocational stuff, some work you're going to get, some opportunity, some work opportunity, some money opportunity connected to your vocation. All righty. This fourth house is about mom. If your mom is still alive, you know, it could be good developments going on with mom and the moon herself is in that, that house during this actual sweetness of this trine. At least she, the moon is there on the 17th. So um, mom might be very helpful for you in some way uh, regarding money and bounty and real estate during 2000, this uh, April 17th timeframe, roughly. All righty. Anything else I'd say for you guys? Um, You have a natural affiliation, right, guys, with, you know, Jupiter. He's the Lord of your ascendant. So even though you can't see him right now, he's behind you. You're here. He's there. A uh, bit of a condition for 2021 where you're going to have more interiority with Jupiter, your dreams at night, your inner visions and stuff like that, maybe a spiritual guide or teacher. But nonetheless, he's still your Lord, the Lord of the ascendant. So, you know, when he is doing good stuff like trining Mars in your real estate house and sextiling Mercury, the god of mercantile and commerce in your second house of money and earnings with the sun shining uh, her light his light there wow so yeah so this is a really sweet good financial and real estate time for a lot of you pisces in this time frame in april all right finish don't forget to like i'm gonna get myself back on the screen i write a chocolate on my lips <laughs> Please like and subscribe. Don't forget, it's a channel that's trying to grow. And don't forget to check out the description box below for everything I have for sale. My sister, Cindy Lee of Blind Faith Readings is a masterful psychic and she's like psychic. And then she does the Lenormand Tarot as a technique. And she's got a half price a year, a year ahead, not just 21, like 12 months ahead sale. The description link is, the, the, the link to her website and her sale is in the description box below. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Mwah. I'm going to now eat real food. <laughs>